Guitar practice session 102324. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on and then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me to verbalize the things I'm trying to learn to get them in my mind better, possibly provide information to others learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to try to learn the things I'm trying to learn, I do think presenting the information is useful because you verbalize things in ways you might not otherwise do, even if no one else is listening. So if anybody else wants to take some of this information or these worksheets and make your own practice sessions, don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that. We'll try to provide you with the worksheets, but they will be orientated from the perspective of actually playing the guitar. And if you're behind the guitar and imprinted the screen, the strings on the page, you'd have the top string on top, top to bottom, left to right, same orientation from you behind the guitar. I'm gonna flip my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed. So what I'm playing should line up to what is on the screen here, which should also line up to you from the perspective of behind the guitar so we can focus just on what we are trying to do. This time I'm looking at the Mixolydian. So in prior uh, days, what I've been kind of working on, my project has been, and I won't go into this in more too much detail because I talk about this and the project and the objective uh, when I start the session here, but just to give you a general idea, uh, we're trying to basically uh, be able to play in any mode, be able to basically play every note within uh, the scale that we are in and know whether I make a major chord or a minor chord. Beyond that, I want to be able to add the 7, 9, 11, and 13 and know that when I do, if it's going to be in the proper key or not. And so we get into discussions on how exactly we might do that. And we then have looked at all of these intervals with regards to the major key. Now I want to look at those positions, such as the fifth of a major key, which you can call the Mixolydian mode. It's the related Mixolydian or fifth chord construction, which has the seventh, which is distinctive. So now we're looking at those intervals for chord creations, which are distinctive. So I built then a worksheet that just has the Mixolydian, which is cool in and of itself, because this is the key that you might play like uh, blues in. So you might be switching from, say, a Mixolydian, one note of the Mixolydian in A to, to a one note uh, in Mixolydian of a D and an E or something like that. Uh, and in a blues situation because what happens there is that we're just going to keep that minor seven uh and but in this case we're looking at it as though it's the fifth which is also a really important concept because the fifth with that minor seven leads back to the first so whether we think about it as the fifth or we think about it as like the first of the mixolydian that's what we want to get into looking at this seventh and then I want to be able to find it in relation to any major. So if I look at any note on the fretboard as my root, I would like to be able to find the 10 note away minor 7 with relation to it. And I should be able to do that by picking just one note somewhere in the middle of the guitar for, for each note as my root note. And then there's only going to be one seventh uh, on each string because there's only one note uh, in in the 12 note octave that is in our that is in our uh, 12 notes right so it's actually it seems overwhelming to kind of do that but it's not too bad if you break it down systematically we'll just learn and then I'll learn each string and say okay if that's my root here's the seven on that string here's the seven on that string the minor seven here it is here here it is here there's only that many of them and then as we do that I'm also going to try to say well if I grab that seven could I also grab my major triad? Remember, we're looking at a major triad with a minor seven because we're looking at that Mixolydian uh, seven, which means it's distinct or different than the seven that you would have on the one or the four compared to the major uh, key. And so as I do that, I'm looking for first grabbing all the notes. If I can't grab all the notes, I will try to grab then the third and drop the five because the third gives the flavor to the triad if i can't do that i will grab the five 
and then uh, drop the third. And you can even think of this as though you're dropping the first, which is weird, but you can think about it from that perspective because you're still going to get that minor seven like feel if you grab like the three, five, and seven, which you can also think about possibly as another chord related to a different you know, root note. But when you're thinking about yourself in the key of A, you might say in certain situations, you might say, okay, I'm going to grab the three, the five, and the seven and drop the, the one, <laughs> which could still sound kind of kind of cool, and you're still, but you're still thinking of it from the perspective as making a one. We don't go into that in too much detail here, but as you're reaching for these notes, you might kind of keep that in mind and see how you might wrap it around and, and play chords around it. And then I kind of just, I only get through like half of it. I totally butcher my joke. My joke wasn't that great to start off with, but then I mess up the punchline and it might be offensive anyways, and I mess up the punchline. So I don't know. You might want to skip the joke. I'm not very impressed. I was going to redo it, but it's like practice sessions, you know, so I, I didn't want to redo it because it's a practice session. So it is what it is. And then I just kind of jam at the end, uh, and that's it. And I only get like halfway through, so I'm going to do the second half maybe tomorrow unless I forget. Continuing on to the Mixolydian mode, focusing in on the seventh of the Mixolydian mode, possibly the most important interval beyond the major scale intervals and beyond the intervals that create the normal three note triad, that being the one, three, five. Noting that the seven, nine, 11, and 13 intervals that we would use to create chords can be a little bit more confusing for multiple different reasons. One of the main reasons being that we cannot apply the normal just across the board major and minor chord constructions as we can with the one, three, five to the seven, nine, 11, and 13. Or in other words, when we think about a three note triad chord, we can break it into the category of either a major chord and a minor chord. Both of those have the same intervals for the one and the five, the distinguishing factor being the three, major chords having a four note away major third, minor chords having a three note away uh, minor third. But then when we go to the seven, I can't just say that there's gonna be a seven that will be applicable to all of the majors and then the, the, se the seven's distance for the minors will be different. We can still use the terms a major seven and a minor seven and we'll still use those terms, but we're gonna have some major modes, in particular the Mixolydian, that has a minor seven in it. So, so that's what we have to kind of wrap our minds around. And remember that the general project here is that I'd like to be able to, let's go back to the related modes tab over here. I'm in, now I'm in the, the tabs with all the related modes that are in the key of C uh, major and related modes for the Dorian, the Phrygian and so on and so forth. Our goal is to be able to say, hey, look, I would like to be able to play in any of the modes I would like to have some convention for me to reorganize the notes for all of the related modes and be able to construct then a chord off of those uh, related modes. Now, the first way we do that is to memorize the major scales and then have a shortcut to say that the one, three, four, I'm sorry, the one, four, five will be major chord constructions. The two, three, and six will be minor chord constructions. The seven is diminished. That is very practical because it helps us to build songs based on just that information. But then when I jumble up the, the ordering of the notes to the related Dorian, I have the same notes, but now they're in a different relative position. And therefore it's gonna be more difficult for me to think about where those relative positions are and whether or not I make a major or minor chord from it, which we can kind of get to a, a little bit if we can't memorize all of the orders here, what we can do is try to tie it to the major key as our Rosetta Stone and try to say, if I can link these to the major key and figure out what the relative position is on the major key, then I know that the one, four, five will be major and the two, three, six will be minor and so on. However, beyond that, I wanna know uh, what about the 7, 9, 11, and 13? If I want to build a more complex chord, how do I know that that chord fits in the key? Well, then we have to go to the modes typically, right? And that's why I'm going to use the major, uh, uh, an absolute mode numbering system based on the relative positions of the major key. And that will tell us what mode that we are in. Now, if you don't know all of the intervals for the modes, 
then that's not going to be very useful and we'll because you have to memorize the intervals and the modes to be able to say i'm going to make a modal chord that is in the same key but if, if so if you want to do that i think that's quite useful that's kind of what i've been uh working on here even if you're not learning that right now might be something later the intervals will still be useful but that's how th these intervals are going to kind of fit into the project here so then we're going to say well if i if i name now why is that useful because if i was playing in the major key and i played like the one four five then if we look at all the intervals we have the one is the one it is what it is the three that's the distinguishing one between a major and a minor chord so i'd build a, a major third off of the c a minor third off of the d because it's going to be a minor chord the five has the same uh distance uh in, uh in terms of a perfect fifth uh so that's the the first three and then what do we do with the seven well, the seven is going to have a distance just looking at the majors now we can still call it major and minor we'll take a look at the minors later so now i have to break it out between major chord and minor chord i'm thinking major chord adding a seven to it well we looked at before the default seven that would be related to our rosetta stone would be which is the major key would be a major seven which would be an 11 note away major seven and that works for Ionian, and that which is the one, and it works for the Lydian, which is the four, but it doesn't work for the Mixolydian. So that's what we got to kind of start to memorize now and say, okay, well, I'm going to learn the major interval for the seven, nine, 11, and 13, and then try to figure out which intervals are different. And when I think about which intervals are different, Ideally, I'd like to apply that to the modes because I'm really making, when I make a one, four, five major chord construction, I'm really making an Ionian chord, a Lydian chord, and a Mixolydian chord if they're all fitting in the same, in the same key of the overarching key being, in this case, C major. So that's what's, that's what's really happening. They all have the same intervals for the one, three, five which which includes a major third and so on but when i go to the 9 11 not the, the 7 9 11 and 13 they could differ so that means when i go to the seven there's two one way i can memorize this and say well the major seven interval is going to work for the one and the four but it's not going to work for the five that's when i have that diminished chord that's when i have uh i mean that's when i have the uh the minor seven right i'm gonna have the minor seven dominant seven could be called that's the leading tone that gets us back to the root so it's really important in that way because it's 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 the one that that really gives it a little bit of flavor or lead back and you have to know that that's in the seven is going to be different than the other two sevens on the one so the other way you want i would so the way i would do it is the absolute numbering system right you could say well if i look at the relative positions to the c i've got the one four five the one and the four are going to be the major uh seven and then the five is going to be a minor seven or you can apply those same numbering system to the modes which means it's going to be the mixolydian mode so if i'm playing a five i'm playing a major chord but i can also just call it the related fifth mixolydian chord which has a seventh in it and the seventh is the distinctive uh flat seven or minor seven when i play in mixolydian so and that and the reason i think that's going to be useful is because then again that will that modal kind of thought process will make it make it easier for all of the different relative positions otherwise we're kind of just memorizing things that are floating around we don't we don't really have anything to tie them to connect them in our mind we don't know where to connect them to so we're just kind of memorizing patterns without seeing the overarching through line uh, between the patterns but uh and just so how would you go about memorizing this i've been doing this for the last couple weeks or so which is basically you would memorize the intervals for the major key and then you and then you memorize the intervals for the related minor key and then and you look at that by looking at the differences between the major and the minor, and then you can compare the relative majors, Lydian and Mixolydian mode to the Ionian mode, and there's only gonna be one interval difference. 
and then you can compare the Dorian and Phrygian to the related minor mode, and there's going to be only one interval difference. All right, so we've so we've done we've I've worked through all these on the on the major. Uh, now I'm going to look at the differences. So the fifth, when I go to the fifth, it has a difference of the of the seventh, right? So if I when I go to the fifth, so I'm going to think about the fifth now, map it out instead of mapping out the 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 scale here, which is what we use to create the chord. I'm going to map it out. Uh, over here in its own mode. I'm going to think about it as though I'm going down to the fifth mode, right? So I'm going down, I would be going to Mixolydian down here into the fifth mode and think about it from that modal structure. It's it's the same thing here because the related mode is the C major. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to, to the Mixolydian. Now this time I've just made all of all of these are Mixolydian, but they have they're all of the notes that don't have sharps and flats so that I can think about any note on the fretboard and try to figure out where in essence the minor seven uh, is is in relation to that uh, to that note. Now I should be able to do that by picking somewhere in the middle of the guitar. I'm just going to pick a string in the middle of the guitar and then I'm going to do uh, the comparison to it. And then that same relative position should be able to be applied anywhere on the guitar as long as it's on the same string. That's the general idea. And if I pick like this note, then there's only going to be six positions because there's only one note on each string because there's only because because that spans the whole. So there's one here on one on this string, one on this string, one on this string. There's two way up here because it's within 12 frets. So it repeats after 12 frets, one on this string and one on this string. Okay, that's the project. Let's start with this A right here. So I'm going to be in the key of A Mixolydian, right? So now I'm in A Mixolydian and thinking about uh, what is... Now, when you're in A Mixolydian, you might say, well, what's the relative major? The relative major is the fourth. So so the, it would be equivalent to the D Ionian or uh, D major. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to say we're here. All right, and, I, and the Mixolydian is kind of like the... So I, I always like to keep in mind that it's kind of like the bluesy thing. So a lot of people think of, of like the bluesy thing different ways. They think of it like they're playing the minor, like a minor shape, but then they add, but then they, but then they slide. And that's a cool way to think of it. Or you think of it as you're in like a, uh, like you're in the, the major, uh, but you're gonna add the flat, but you're gonna add the flat seven, and you're gonna flatten the seven, which basically puts you into the mixolydian mode, uh, or you could think of it in mixolydian. So just different perspectives on it, which might make you play differently if you look at it from different angles. Knowing more, by the way, if you don't know all of that, then then it's likely that limitation could actually make you play cool stuff because it's kind of like you have uh, more limitations are actually good to be more creative sometimes, right? And if, you, if you're looking at it from a, a wider viewpoint, then you often have to limit your limitate. You have, to, you have to refine down your viewpoint so that you, otherwise you're going to get overwhelmed with too much information, <laughs> right? So I think... Anyways, but knowing more information isn't bad, right? It's just that then you want to say, okay, now how am I looking at it? I can't look at it from a hundred different ways at the same time. I have to, you have to limit it down to look at it one way at a time. Kind of like if you're writing a poem or something, you have to say, okay, now I'm writing in this form and that's what I'm going to stick to. Otherwise, I'm going to go all over the place. It's going to sound like modern poetry like gibberish or something. It's going to sound like a banana someone duct taped to the wall or something. It ain't going to make no sense. Okay, anyway, let's get to it. We're going to say this is... So if I'm on this A, so then I... Well, is that the... That's not even the A. A. <laughs> a little out of it today. <laughs> I'm going to say, what am I going to do then? I'm going to say, well, uh, I'm looking for an 11... A 10 note away minor 7. So uh, the inverse of that would be 12 minus 10 which would be a two note away major second. So if I'm going behind it, I'm looking for the inverse. So if I go from this G to A, 
that would be a two note away uh, major second. If I go from A to G, that then would be a 10 note away uh, minor seven. So that, of course, from that perspective, I could use that to like arpeggiate. So I could say that I have, what can I do with that note? I have a third here, so I could go one, three, uh, minor seven, right? One, three, minor seven, one, three, one, three, minor seven. I have a fifth over here. Uh, let me put this around here. That's the one I'm on. So I could go like, I could go like one, three, I can't get to that five minor seven. Let me try that again. One, three, five minor seven. One, three, five minor seven. All right. What else do I got? I've got a five down here. So then I've got, there's my threes right there. There's my five, that would be an A major chord. And then I've got my seven right there, which is interesting. So now I've got one, three, five, lifting up my pinky, seven. potential actually what if I all right move on move on I'm never going to get through all this today I'm a little all right, let's just go to the next string down. We have to get some pro. Got to get at least halfway through this thing, man. Slacking today. You're slacking. All right. So that's going to be a 10 note away. How do I know? Because there's five notes between each string. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's like that stretchy position. Which this is where you need the big hands. Or you hold your guitar up like this, so you get like a, you can't really see how I'm holding it, but <laughs> classical style, because you can reach a little bit further up, get your thumb behind. So I could go from this. So doing that, I've got my E. And that's the one where you could grab, you get that shuffle pattern because I could go from here to here, which would be the, nine, the major nine to the flat seven. And notice to do that, I'm putting my finger here. Instead of this finger, I'm reaching this finger so that I can get my pinky up there. And then I got my thumb way behind the back of the guitar. So even people with small hands, I think you can actually do this. Because I've seen people do it. They, they convinced me that I... My hands... thing to do uh, let's move on let's just go to the next string so I have a seven a minor seven down here that's the shape that usually should come to mind most if you've been working on like within position shape within four to five fret position shapes the five shapes on the guitar and that's of course five ten so five ten and that one you've got a cool 
shape a third right there. So that's another that's a standard blues shape. Get you a lot of tension. And then you got your third up here. So I could switch back and forth between the third, maybe I go this way. If I could reach this, like, no, it's not gonna happen. Well, what if I did? And then I have my third right here. So now I'm doing boom, obviously. So my normal A minor shape is this. E minor, A bar shape, and then I could reveal, but I'm on the major, hold on, E major bar shape, and then I reveal picking my pinky up, the G, so. You can only do that on the Mixolydian one, or if you're playing in the, like the blues in general, because otherwise that G won't be in there. It'll be up here. That's why, that's why we're doing this. All right, let's see what else we got. Moving on, we've got, this is five, 10, 15, 14, 13, 11, 10, what did it say? 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. All right, that makes sense. Could I reach that if it wasn't? That would be a reach. I could probably do it. But certainly not the most practical. So I'll leave it. I see you there, but I'm going to leave you there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that one. Let's do this one. That's going to be 5, 10, 15. Let's bring it down. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2 is 3, plus the kink in the tuning goes up here to 5, 6, 7. Now hold on a second, that doesn't make sense. 5, 10, 15, which brings it back down to 3. 15 minus 12 is 3. 3 plus 5 is 7, 8, 9. Should be 10. Dang it. 5, 10, 15 brings it down to 3. 3 plus 5 is 8, 9, 10. God, I thought you were an accountant. You can't count nothing, man. Okay. It's not good. Rude. I, I, I could grab my fifth up here. I have a fifth up here that I could grab with that. Would you like a fifth with that? <laughs> and then I have my third is over here. So in other words, I can grab this shape. This is my A major shape. I can let this pinky go, revealing that G. But I can also reach down to this G. Let that pinky go and reach down to this G. And if that becomes difficult, I could let go of my fifth and just bring the, the open that up to that D and then I could just grab my third. It's kind of cool. I'll have to play with that more later. All right. Let's do the next one. Here. So now we've got this G. So I've got the third up here. I could grab the third like that. That's grabbing this third, but maybe I could grab like this third. Like if I could bar, if I could get it with that finger, that would be really cool. But no, that's not happening. 
What are you, crazy? What are you... Can't grab it like that. So there's not too much I can do. I'm not going to think about it too much here. I'm moving on to the next one. I might have to cut this short today. I'm, uh... Let's put my joke in there. It's not a very good joke. But I'll put it in there anyways. Hopefully it's not... I think I need to refine it down. But these are practice sessions. So it is what I'm drink my coffee. All right. Joke time. I thought we had a chicken or egg problem, but the problem was actually much bigger than that because the egg turned out to be that of an ostrich, which I know you would think the egg size should have made us suspicious. The chickens weren't even in the equation, you know? But, but you see, we had this naive view that all eggs were chicken eggs. But apparently, apparently that's not even a big deal because due to something in the water, the farm across the street had an even stranger problem, uh, which once again turned out, to, turned out not to be a chicken and egg problem because we had a rooster and egg problem. No, we had a we had an ostrich and egg problem. They, they, they had, they had a rooster. It was a rooster and egg problem. Man, I messed up the punchline on that one. Wow. Uh, I would have thought that we would see the, the day. Would, would, when would you have thought that you'd see the day that, that the number of chicken and egg problems have been overshadowed by the amount of, of rooster and egg problems? I mean, that's unusual. Didn't see that one coming. We, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Ha! It's a trick question. There's no chicken involved here. It was a rooster. Burn. Hey, wait, I don't think that's possible. Okay, we've heard enough about the, the, about the gender thing. Rooster laying an egg, whatever. That's old news, man. It's like, a, it's like the carnival bearded lady thing. It's old news. We see it all the time at this point. Just let it go. Just let it go. Okay, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll go go to the giant ostrich rooster egg. Let it go. I'll let it go on your face. Hit you with the, hit you in the face with a giant ostrich rooster egg. I'd say the yolk's on you, but really, who knows what's inside a rooster egg? You know, it might not be any yolk in there at all. Getting hit. Getting hit with a rooster egg may be like being slapped with a with a rooster waddle. A rooster waddle being the the funny rooster skin that hangs down on either side of the of the rooster beak. In case you didn't know that, I didn't know that. I had to look it up because I I thought it would be a funny thing to to reference a rooster getting hit with a rooster waddle. Anyway, okay, that was terrible. I butchered it too. I I butchered like. I have butchered the punchline. I almost want to edit it. I'm not going to edit it. It's a practice session. Ugh, I could have done it so much better. Okay, whatever. No one cares. I'm going to go down to the next one. Let's go to the D. Let's go to the D. Let's do it on the D. All right, here we go. All right, so if we go above here, I'm gonna be looking for one that's the inverse. So I'm looking for a 10 note away uh, minor seven. So the inverse would be 12 minus 10, which would be a two note away major second. So if I count that up, I'm, I want a distance of two notes. So it's gonna be negative five, I would say, four, three, two. So I can count that out. And so boom, top to bottom, two note away major second, bottom to top. 10 note away minor seven. All right, what can I do with that? I have a, uh, I have a third right here. So I could say this, I could go boom, boom, boom. So that would be the seven, the one, the three. Whoop, that's kind of a reach, not too bad. Seven, one, three. have a five 
that's over here. So I could go boom, boom, uh, and then the A. Wait a second. No, it's up here. So that might be the finger in for it. So now seven, one, five. It's not too bad. And then I could, of course, bar this off. If I bar this off, I get an 11 and another seven this way. Interesting. Okay, that's cool. And then I could just go down here to another one where I could just bar this off like this, maybe. Okay, let's move on. Uh, then here, I'm gonna say we want the seven. So again, behind it would be two notes behind. So if I go from C to D, that would be a two note away major second. From D to C would be a seven note away, uh, a 10 note away minor seven. So then I have a third underneath it. So I have the third underneath it. So I could arpeggiate with that third. So that would be one, three, seven, one, three, seven, one, three, what? One, three, seven, one, three, seven, one, three, seven. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I keep on, oh, now I snorted. God, just a mess. I gotta. Now I'm gonna say this is gonna be one, five. Okay, okay, and then I have a five here, so I could say, like, there's another A, one, well, the A, five, seven. Obviously, I have a five above it. I said I was moving on. No, wait a second here. You you have one right there. You have to do that one first. One, five. One, five, seven. Whoa, wait, that's not right. One, five, seven. All right, let's go uh, to the next one down up here. So that's the one where we have our shuffle pattern shape. That would be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so I could shuffle between this A and there by doing this, just like we did up top. So I can go boom, but it's actually way out here. So I can I can go. Let's just keep it at that. That's the main thing, I think, with that one. Let's go then down here. That's my seven position. Ten notes in between that, because two strings, five, ten. I, I have my standard. This is a shape, standard, again, diminishes shape, or a standard kind of bluesy seven shape with my three. Five at 
could add a five at the top to in other words I could add instead of that five I can add this one kind of hard to mute I could like lean it forward and that's when I would play my D minor shape which normally would be like this for a D I'm sorry D major shape would normally be like this an A shape but then I want to reveal the uh, this one so instead of me playing these three notes I've switched my shape to this so now I reveal the th this one. So I could be playing if I was playing this. Interessante, importante, and then I'm gonna go down here 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. So, could I reach back to that C? Maybe. Quite a reach. I could grab the third while I'm reaching. open and then I'd like to be able to grab the five but that ain't happening not at the same time so I could go from the five here to then reaching back to the seven about all that's gonna happen there let's go to the top one bring it to the top bring it to the top G. 
So now I've got, there's the three. And I got my five, so that's. Oh, wait a second. So if I play my A shape here, I could reveal this way and reveal that C. Or I can grab up this way and get my C down there and maybe still grab that 5. my hand. Let's see if I can get one more in there. Let's go to the G. My pick isn't fitting in my hand. For goodness gracious' sake, get on with the 
lesson or the do the work man you're not doing the work okay doing the work i'm doing the work okay so now i'm gonna say there's <laughs> there's 12 12 12 minus 10 is 2 so i'm looking for a distance of 2 so that would be 5 4 3 2 okay so f to g would be a two note away major second g to f would be a uh, 10 note away minor seven. Okay, so there's that one. And what can I do with that? Well, I've got a fifth over here. So I could do like arpeggiate. So it could be like one, five, seven. wanted to that was lame why would you even want to do that okay because might be hand, might be useful sometimes so then I have uh, a three up here and a seven so that's interesting so now I've got the three see what's happening here I'm hip to the happenings I'm hip to the happenings so let's go here here and here also useful That's not going to help me much. All right, what else do I got? Then I've got back here. There's a two note distance between those two. So if I went from F to G, two note away major second, G to F, ten note away minor seven. So then I have a five above it. So I could say I go one, five, And then I have a three down here. So I could do it like this. One, one, three, whoa, whoa. One, three, seven, 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 one, three, seven. Let's just move on. I'm getting tired. Let's do that here. Getting tired. Wussy. I've. <laughs> this is, I'm crossing the kink in the tuning, so it's gonna be five and then ten. It would be back here. That's what we saw up above, but now it's over here because it's five ten. All right. Ten note away. Minor seven. So behind it is a three. So this is a this is a useful shape I've been playing. I've been doing that. I was aware of that one. So one three seven. Cool voicing. You could try to get the five above it. That's a little wonky. Trying to get 
get the five up here. That's not really easy. It's kind of, you would think it'd be doable, but it is not comfortable. Unless you put your finger behind the guitar like that. But then I like to mute the A up top, or the E up top. Is it hard? So whatever. Whatever, man. It feels like I have an I have a finger hanging out up here. What can I do with that finger? I can't grab that. Can I grab the E? No, it's like in no man's land. It's on the six. Can't do nothing with it. Good. It's just a worthless finger hanging out there. <sighs> All right, so what else do I got? I could do this down here. So there's my F and I got a B down here. That's cool. I haven't been doing that. I could get that 11, which is the C by barring. Might have to toy with that a bit more. All right, let's move on to uh, where was I? I don't even know. I don't even know what's happening anymore. Five, ten, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. Quite a reach. I could get my third. It's doable. Anyway, I'm a little tired. I'm going to stop. We'll keep going on that tomorrow if I remember where I was.